take a piece of scrap paper to catch the dribs and drabs. Take a reasonably good pair of scissors and trim all of the ratty excess of the original binding. We want to trim right next to the board. This also, well, besides aesthetics, which is an absolute, uh, ratty is ratty, and there is no way you can make this tattered stuff uh, look presentable. Uh, at any rate, um, it also uh, makes the intrusion of the blade, which is the next step, uh, much easier. Let me just get this last bit here. And we have the fold over, so you turn it over. I hope you're getting this. And trim that also. There's a nice clean edge, except for the marble paper, of course. That will be uh, skimmed off, paired off, I should say, like so. That is just going to get in the way of our further reattachment of the boards to the new text block with its new backing and the new spine. So. Lots of old paste under there. Good news is it's all brittle. It is water soluble but you really don't want to get moisture anywhere near the uh, old leather. There, that's pretty good. Now, next thing, we'll pause for cleanup. I should explain, I am left-handed. This is a left-handed palette knife which I made myself, by the way. I'll, I'll uh, do a piece on how to make your own pallet knife later. Uh, normally, I would be doing it this way. Actually, I will have to do it this way. Unfortunately, the cameras are set up the wrong way. I can't help that. You'll just have to imagine that I am looking for that fine hairline division between the original leather and the board. Make some test intrusions here, trying to find the soft underbelly of the leather. When you think you have something pretty close, you then begin, this is a single bevel pallet knife. I'm using it as, usually you use it as a, much as a plane. A woodworker would use a plane to pair off uh, material. In this case, I am using the flat edge along the board, hopefully, and the beveled edge insinuated under the leather. There we go. So you found the underside of the leather. Now you just gradually work and work and work. It is incised here, uh, imprinted with a blind stamp, which uh, distorts and goes actually depresses into the um, board itself. So you want to be very careful here. You need to lift this leather out of that little shallow before you do anything close to cutting. Otherwise, you're going to cut into the leather at these points and thereby thinning the leather and you're going to leave leather residue in the groove of the board. So, as you approach this point, you just give it little, little nudges and try to lift the vast majority of the leather out of the grooves. 
you only need to do a few of these before you get a rather sophisticated sense of feel for what's happening underneath. Now you see it takes patience, but a little at a time and you can achieve quite a great deal. I am not going to the end and cut through. We will eventually, but I'll explain why uh, it's necessary. There's more potential trouble spot. For aesthetic purposes, I'm going to cut from the underside. I'll explain that when I get to it. So we don't go to the end yet. Uh, these are bevel boards. Uh, you can probably see that. So if we cut from the underside to create the flap so that it's freed from the board from the underside, uh, you won't, you shouldn't, from a full-on front view of the finished product, you shouldn't see any ragged cut edge, hopefully. That's plan A. At any rate, you notice I turn the blade upside down now because I'm working back. How far in do you go? Uh, personal discretion. The farther in you go, the stronger the join will be. When, because you'll be, when the flap is created, you expose the original board. That is the surface. The new spine, the new cloth. Uh, for the new spine will be attached to. So the deeper in you go, the stronger the attachment. On the other hand, if you're dealing with very tricky leather, in this case, this leather is actually in pretty good shape. It's not cracking, it's not uh, showing any distortion to speak of, it's not even losing the finish uh, as we manipulate it. As we are, have to be a little tricky here because we're going the wrong way for the bevel of the knife. Just a little at a time. Take your time. There you go. Does this... Is this actually trickier than it looks? Maybe it is. I've done it so much. All I can say is the first half dozen might be painful, but you will get to a point where it's not that big a deal, especially if you're working with decent leather. I'm using this uh, second double incised line as my guide. It doesn't really matter as long as you wind up with more or less a straight line for your, for the uh, flap. And we'll go not quite to the beveled edge. There you go. Now, okay, and we've triple checked that it's more or less a smooth line. Good. Now, we turn it over. We've got to create an edge on the paper much trickier because paper is much more insubstantial even though this is backed the uh, typically the marbled hand marbled matter of fact hand marbled uh, paper of this era is tissue thin however it is backed with more substantial paper which gives it substance so you want to lift all the paper uh, if you just tried to lift the very thin layer of marble paper, uh, good luck. You'd be in you'd be in trouble. So we're going to start lifting a a, a uh, flap as we did on the front. However, this time we're going right to the end and cut through because this is a flat surface. Hopefully, if we do it carefully, we'll get more or less a clean cut. Therefore, when we reattach the new cloth 
and you'll have a fold over, of course, top and bottom of the new cloth spine. Uh, that will go over and this will be closed, so this will be thicker than normal. So you will have a gap, but the gap will be on the flat side, which tends to be on the inside. So as you look at it from uh, externally, it should be more or less, well, as little noticeable as possible, which is, aesthetically speaking is a good thing. Now, again, forgive the angle, but I am left-handed and the bindery is set up for right-handed cameras. You really want to take your time starting the paper, even more so than the leather. As I said before, paper is less forgiving, much more delicate. So patience is definitely a virtue. If you can just get a foothold, like so, under the paper, then you can just start working little by little, do whatever it takes. Again, a palette knife for this, a single bevel knife, is invaluable. If you were to try to do this with a double beveled knife, it would be far more difficult. The reason this is so successful, if you can imagine a single beveled plain blade, uh, which this is equivalent to, working on a piece of wood, the flat surface glides along the wood surface and you only have to insinuate a slight angle to pair off a very thin shaving of wood, hence planes. However, if the plane blade were double beveled, you couldn't achieve the flat surface approach and it would complicate things. Your angle of approach would have to be much steeper, etc, etc. Now you see we're getting close to the edge and we're not going to go right through until I get more or less the depth I want. I'm about halfway there now. This flap, of course, is to accommodate the new backing material, professionally called mull, although mull implies a high thread count cheesecloth sort of thing, a uh, very gauzy material. In this case, I prefer to use a very thin cotton. Uh, actual cloth. Mull is cotton normally. Anyhow, but uh, instead of a gauze like material, this, uh, what I prefer to use for backing, is uh, actual cloth. Now, this is going to take a while because we're going to be very, very patient. I could try turning the knife around and working towards me, which I sometimes do uh, because it's so much quicker. Problem is, with this particular material, I'm not that confident that I can stay between the board and the paper looks good uh, sufficiently. So I'm going to just continue plodding along the good news is you'll only have to watch me do one of these. I'll do the other off camera so as not to bore you beyond tears. Can you, can you see the high angle of approach I'm using because my blade is flat side up now? 
and I really want to make sure I don't cut through the paper. If you cut through the paper, it's not the end of the world. And usually, if it's straightforward enough, uh, by the time you get it reattached, if you're uh, lucky and careful, uh, it'll be unnoticeable for all intents and purposes. You'll have to know where the tear is or the cut is to notice it when you open the book. However, it's something you really do want to avoid.